Sup, arrogant. Hi, I'm Reshit, 16 years old, Rodham G YouTuber, closeted homosexual, and this will be the first Rodham G YouTube video I've done in a while. And if this appears false to you, it's because I'm gonna be honest with you, uh, it is a little. Just a, just a tiny bit. You see, I know that the few hundreds of people that still follow me, because I was on a vacation for three weeks and my views dropped drastically, not only because of my videos that I uploaded, wasn't even Rodham G content, but also that such a long break really breaks your spirit in making videos. Never mind. I won't be that stupid NPC that you can't skip its origin story because it just wants to tell you it. I mean, no one cares. It was actually rather hard to get started on Rodham G again. So bear with me, I'm going to attempt to teach you on how to go Mafia Deep. Regal Deep. Sorry, what's the meme again? So first thing to do before watching this video is go watch my dodging guide because I think that's gonna help you a lot. Or not. I'll try and not repeat myself. So while you're at it, just watch my O2 guide as well. Really dragging in some old views. Now for what you actually came for. So basically going deep is considered reckless rushing onto the enemy with the purpose of actually hitting some shots or getting a stun in or something. And the art of doing that is not just avoiding and dodging, but also predicting. This point varies from boss to boss, most significantly on Oryx the Mad God 2. The infamous shotgun that can kill even the best of the players, but what happens when people die on it? And here's my friend dying on Oryx the Mad God 2 and what actually happened was he basically just stood still. Which is a thing you, like, never should do. Why would you even stand still in front of an unstunned Oryx the Mad God? It makes no sense. He's stupid. Oryx shotgun is really impulsive, so never stand close to it while standing still. At least move. A really good thing to also know before going onto a boss, before going deep, is to know the boss's shot pattern. Does the boss fire at a specific player if you go near it, or does it just spray out shots in every direction that you can predict? In the Oryx the Mad God 2 case, it has a shotgun that targets the nearest player to the boss. Which means that you should probably not stay closest to the boss unless you have the situation under complete control. A good thing to do if you run a warrior against the Oryx the Mad God 2 is to circle it while speed boosted. You can actually just drop the speed boost and just walk around him because his shotgun is so slow. But walk out of the circle immediately if some other player breaks the pattern by walking in on the Oryx the Mad God 2 boss and thereby dragging the shotgun attention to them. And if you're in the path of the shotgun, you might die even though you went deep and actually had good control. Therefore, I wouldn't recommend you to go deep if there's other players really close to the boss since it can be unpredictable and really unreliable. This of course assuming that you're not under the status effect of invulnerability or invisibility. Well, here's a showcase of how you stun O2. Don't run straight in Forex the Mad God 2, but run in with a rotation so that you avoid the first shotgun that he will shoot straight towards you. It's really simple, but you just have to look out for these status effects, most notably confusing. Never go in for the stun if you have the slowed debuff uh, or the quiet debuff. I don't know why you would go in with no mana since you can't s stun. The next really important thing to pay attention to is mana and HP control. Hit points explains itself and mana is basically for ability use. This is also where pets really play a huge part. This dude gets his first stun successfully, but you soon start to realize that his pet can't keep up with the stuns that he's shooting. He also misses his second stun due to standing too far away and using the MP part too late. That is of course not a real matter if you have a divine pet. Not that you can't die with a divine pet, that's only a few are really bad at managing your health. You can easily avoid stupid deaths by just checking your HP and making sure that you have at least three quarters of your health available. Otherwise, I don't suggest you to go in if you're new to the game. Also, just a bonus one, don't rely on the knights too much. You can't be sure that they just stunned or how long the duration is unless you checked their shield beforehand. Don't hug the boss unless you're the knight yourself. Don't always stay in the crowd since shots can pierce like in the tomb. You're not always safe with the crowd. A really good case of this is in the Lost Holes on the Marble Colossus, where if you are in the group, you still have a chance to get popped by those pop rocks, since they are piercing and no healing can change that. That should clear things up. In relation to the last tip, you should utilize your teammates better. And as in teammates, I mean your fellow players. You see a trickster throw a decoy? 
Use it. If you see a risky pally drop an M seal on top of the boss, I mean, go in. What kind of power ups do you have in your inventory? Bath water? Use it. Tell one newts, sell them. A good thing not to say is probably also that you can avoid going deep by just playing ranged. The thing is that it just tends to not be as fun as tanking around and being reckless. But sometimes, just sometimes realize that the dungeon might not be worth your character dying. Please note, I said sometimes. If you lose your tier 1 bow in a tomb, it's not my fault. On this topic, it's really hard to not repeat what I said in the dodging video because that's what I would take into account. Already said it in the dodging video, but the environment can really fuck you up. Especially if it's the quicksand in the tomb and you go in for a stun, but you get caught in the quicksand and Bess is suddenly on top of you and about to fuck you up. And it will significantly boost your chance of survival if you choose to go deep with the character that is maxed. But these are things that you of course know. Now, how do you practice going onto a boss without having the risk of dying? First off, I would advise you to start playing off-centered. I play centered. I don't actually know why, it just feels better. Play off center, utilize your screen rotation. It's much easier to dodge and navigate around that way. Also, get to know the boss before you go in. Don't go deep on your first attempt. Observe the boss and its way of attacks before you go in. I would say at least have tried the dungeon three times before going really deep. Unless it's meant to, like in the Shaitans. Hold your F key ready in both ways and have a blast. Okay, that was me for it later. See ya. I just Yo, I just fought two bitches